Thank you for tuning in to today's full episode of the Breaking Changes podcast. I'm your host and chief evangelist for Postman, Ken Lane. With Breaking Changes, we explore topics from the world of APIs, but through the lens of business and engineering leadership. Joining me today, we have Olga Podolako, Principal API Architect at Microsoft. Olga provided me with a walkthrough of what I'd consider to be the most robust e approach to enterprise scale API governance that I've seen to date. All right. Um, I always, I always start with the basics. Start real simple. Who are you, and and what do you do? So my name is Olga Podolako, and I am a principal API architect for Microsoft Graph. My main responsibility is to drive Microsoft Graph API governance and standards. Originally, I am from Russia, but I live in Michigan for more than 25 years. And I have extensive experience in development, architecture, and also I led cloud adoption in my previous roles. Have multiple certifications in these areas. Currently, I am focusing on mostly on architecture and uh, governance specifically. And at Microsoft Graph, we have extensive governance process to uh, achieve our organizational roles and make our API, Graph API specifically surface uh, great and uh, very usable and useful for API developers. Wow, exactly the type of conversations I'm looking to have. I think most enterprises I'm talking to today are trying to achieve what you just described. So what set this in motion? How did, uh, how did this governance effort at Microsoft come to be? Honestly, I have not started this effort. It, had, uh, it started uh, almost five years ago. And you understand that it, it takes time. It takes time to make sure that all our API surface is consistent and has a similar shape, similar be behavior. We have more than 30 to hundreds of different APIs. So what we realized that without governance, we cannot achieve uh, consistency and usability. And we also cannot deliver great quality APIs. And what we think about quality, it's not only not good design, it's also performance, it's also predictable releases, it's also predictable support response. It's also uh, consistent, uh, consistency in the performance latency and availability. All these aspects need to be uh, more or less the same across all 3200 of our resources at Graph. And it's how we started the governance. Wow, yeah, that's, that's very important because from what I've seen, a lot of conversations have been focused on just design design consistency, and they've hit a lot of problems uh, in other areas because of the things that you mentioned, you know, performance, uh, a lot of other things matter. So that's a lot of APIs. I'm guessing it's a lot of people you have to deal with too. So how much of this governance is, is automation, education, workshops, training? Uh, uh, how much of it is, is technology versus people, I guess? Uh, yes, you hit the right point because we have more than 120 different teams delivering APIs and we have three large organizations with lar large API review boards uh, in Microsoft only for Microsoft Graph. And Microsoft Graph de delivers API surface for M365, uh, Azure Active Directory uh, products. Right, so it's a lot of people involved in the process. A lot of our effort goes on education. A lot of our effort goes into creating standards, writing down standards, and we're doing in we're doing it in the federated manner. So it's not only me, for example, even if I am responsible for standards for API graph, it's not only me writing the standards. We also have a governance body, uh, responsibilities of the governance body of the API Council uh, is review all the standards and uh, 
basically manage process changes as well. In addition, as well, as soon as we know what are our standards, where we're moving, we try to maximize automation. Because for 3200 APIs and 120 teams, just writing a standard is not enough. We put a lot of effort in creating linting tools, creating tools for uh, automa automated test, uh, testing of API capabilities like you must implement CRUD operations or you must implement filtering, sorting and other query uh, capabilities. So linting and testing comes first so that we can shift validation of API design left as much as possible. In addition, we have uh, additional uh, API concerns uh, like cross-cutting concerns like permissions, for example. We also have additional testing proactively before deploying it. And uh, all these tools together uh, create, uh, create our onboarding pipeline. Our onboarding pipeline is based on Azure DevOps. And Azure DevOps coordinates the workflow, coordinates the approval, coordinates invoking of different uh, automation tools like linting tools, validation tools, testing tools, and obviously deployment into different environments. And also yeah. at the end of the hour pipeline, we have uh, extensive monitoring. So you mentioned, uh, I hear a lot of customers come into governance and they focus on the the pipeline as you said with azure devops is is the enforcement of governance and a lot of people start there but you mentioned shifting it left so what does that involve is it like design reviews uh what how, how do you shift governance left so that more teams are are working on it earlier on yes it's a very interesting question uh so in my previous experience um in my previous experience, uh, I observed that people understand governance as mostly verification of some of some quality, let's say, quality attributes uh, at the runtime, at the operation time. Governance effectively consists of two sides. First, you need to set up standards and requirements, and then you would verify them. Depends on what kind of standards and requirements you're setting. Uh, for example, we are setting requirements like planning, like design uh, requirements, uh, consistent shape, consistent um, consistent uh, capabilities of APIs. These specific requirements can be verified before deployment. And it's what I mean shifting left. It means that during design, as soon as the shape of API is more or less known, and specifications are written down, we can start doing linting processes. We can start doing validation processes like mocking, uh, mocking for example, APIs. We, we have a mock service. We have additional uh, environment where we can, um, where developers can verify their design just uh, in, in their local environment and uh, it's what I call shifting left. Yeah, it's really about, it sounds like it's about enabling developers to do governance rather than enforcing and and being being uh, more care at teaching them how to do things well, rather than just uh, pushing on them to uh, that, to get it into production, they have to do it, do it right. Definitely. It's more about self-service, about the ability to verify that uh, your API is compliant to the standards. What other kind of building blocks and patterns do you su supply for developers? You, you talked about standards. How do you you help make sure that they 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 apply consistent patterns when they're designing APIs? I I truly believe in these patterns and building blocks in general for architecture. I think it's the main responsibility of architects and also API architects to provide and describe these building blocks. So we doing it in multiple in multiple channels, multiple avenues. For example, 
From the standard documentation perspective, our uh, baseline documentation was created relatively long time ago. It was Microsoft Rust API guidelines who set the foundation for Rust services inside Microsoft and also provided best practices for industry. On top of it, we have a variation specific for Microsoft graph uh, guideline. It's a short summary. It's a short summary document describing our approach that, for example, we need to start with the main model to create a user-friendly API. This short document is augmented with a library of patterns. And we borrowed uh, architecture, uh, archi architecture uh, language of, for describing this, these patterns. Specifically, our patterns consist of what is the problem we're trying to solve, in what context, and what is the solution for this problem. These patterns are short documents describing pattern, um, solution, and des describing, uh, uh, providing multiple examples on how to use this pattern. This is very actionable documents. In addition, in addition, we have a new avenue for uh, for helping our developers to implement these patterns in the API design. We are working on a new language cattle, which allows us to codify these patterns and make design make design uh, as a Lego actually. Uh, as combining different Lego blocks into one design, bringing design patterns easily uh, to create API shape. And uh, in addition, in addition, we also have, in addition to helping with design, we also have uh, implementation library implementing similar patterns so that we can create a scaffold for the background service supporting the API based on the API design. All these steps significantly help us to, to drive API first approach so that we, we can start with design, we use building blocks for API design, and then we can create a scaffolding for the background service. I like it. So you said in there API first. What does API first mean to you? API first is a really good concept, but which is kind of diff difficult to implement, especially and especially in the environment when you already have a lot of legacy products and legacy services. But still, when it's very helpful when uh, you try to bring to market a new product or a new service. What it means for us, uh, it's. Uh, when we talk about API first, we talk about starting a product design or service design with use cases and thinking about interactions between users, clients with your product. This conversation drives us to creating a user-friendly interfaces, which reflects main information flows main uh, use cases, as I already said, uh, for the product design and for the API design. And uh, it's what we basically call uh, API first approach, starting with use cases uh, and starting with user interactions or client interaction interactions for your product. I think, I think that's one of the better definitions I've heard of API first, because most people are very technical in their response, but it sounds like you're bringing it closer to business, that this needs to be about business outcomes rather than just the APIs themselves. Yes, and uh, I truly believe that APIs actually are a user interfaces. Even though they, yes, they, it's a programmability surface, we start with users, we start with developers. It should be understandable by developers who will use our APIs. So it's why we pay so much attention to user, con for example, to naming conventions, to consistency of shape and behavior, to consistency of patterns. We also exposed our, our um, design guidelines are public, so everybody can see them. And 
we truly we truly think about API design from usability perspective a lot. Yeah, that's so important. So how much of this work is is centralized versus federated across teams? As, um, as I mentioned, we have three large organizations working uh, on delivery of APIs, and uh, we have three different review boards. Uh, so governance, from governance perspective, it's federated. Uh, we have a centralized bo body to review the main principles, the process changes and standards, but overall, uh, the work itself is done in different organizations. Uh, we also, because of this ability of shifting left and uh, reusing building blocks, we also delegate a lot of decisions back to implementation teams. And we have API champions uh, in some of our teams who overview consistency of APIs across large products, for example, Teams or, um, let's say, um, Azure Active Directory. So from this perspective, we, we try to, to federate as much as possible and enable consistency using automation, mostly automation and uh, consistent standards. Yeah. So how, how do you know What's success? How do you know governance is working? It's a very interesting question. Uh, and it's a very difficult question because uh, as, um, results of governance is working uh, are long-term results. It's a, it's a strategic question. And for us right now, this strategic question, can we define it very simple. Based on our organizational objectives, we are building we are building basically a graph ecosystem for developers. So every developer can go to graph APIs and easily start development using Microsoft capabilities uh, for their uh, business solutions, so that they can innovate on top of uh, graph APIs. So from this perspective, for us, it's extremely important to deliver API as a software product. And when we think about API as a software product, we think about what does it mean to deliver a good software product? This defines our success. So in our terms, our success, success of API governance is success of our APIs. And it means that good software product, uh, we need to deliver good software uh, product. But it's not only software product. There are a lot of specific specifics, right? It, there is, it's an API, first of all. So API uh, needs to have a great design. It's a cloud product. So it needs to have um, reliability, uh, reliability and performance and uh, operational excellence according to the cloud standards. So we designed, we designed a quality framework for our APIs, which is based on our success definition. And this quality framework consists right now on from eight, uh, eight quality attributes. This quality attributes include planning and roadmap, monetization, and um, um, de design considerations, security. Security is essential for our APIs. Uh, it has um, it has uh, performance and availability, and also operational excellence. From this perspective, it's how we define success. Uh, so we define success. Now we need to measure it, and we create we created a dashboard to reflect all this quality criteria. We defined KPIs for each of these quality areas. So we have a dashboard and we have a weighted combined score, uh, which basically reflects uh, success of a specific API. 
And I guess it's a long-winded answer, but uh, the point was that we designed, we, de we created the criteria, quality criteria to describe our success, and we created a visibility, traceability for these criteria using a dashboard and a weighted score, and it's how we uh, see if our governance is successful. It's impressive. It's more than I've seen out of most organizations I've talked to. I've talked to a lot of enterprise groups. It's pretty sophisticated. Um, how much of this, I mean, I can tell you've put a lot of work into defining all of this and, and laying this foundation. How much of this is static and will always be the same? Or is, is your governance ever changing and kind of living and evolving alongside this? Oh, our governance definitely, to your point, definitely evolving. Uh, because we started, we started five or six years ago, mostly focusing on design, and it's extremely important for APIs because uh, this is the first impression for API developers when they see graph APIs. They expect that it will be consistent across all these different M365 products. It's uh, very important as we grow and mature. As we understand how our APIs are used for critical business systems, we realize that design is not enough, that we need to provide predictability, that we need to provide reliability, that we need to provide operational support. And all these characteristics basically uh, triggered the next uh, the next phase of API governance, I would say, governance uh, evolution of the governance. But again, uh, governance is a strategic process, and it takes long time because we should think about not only external API developers. We also think about all these 120 teams which are in Microsoft. They need to know what are new quality requirements. We need to socialize, communicate, educate them on what does it mean to deliver a great uh, API software product, right? They, obviously, they know what does it mean to deliver great technology product, but we're talking specifically about graph APIs, for example. So we, uh, yes, this evolution, um, this evolution goes continuously as we learning from experience as well. And it also reflects our evolving organizational roles. As we're moving forward, we build new goals for organization and it impact our governance evolution as well. Do you feel like this gives you the strength and kind of the, the muscle to be able to respond to whatever is going to come next business-wise for Microsoft? Definitely, definitely. We are very, we are very agile, and um, uh, what what I see, our strengths is in uh, ability to delegate to teams uh, important design decisions, ability to support federation, ability for teams uh, to uh, make their own decision and automate and we automate validation of these decisions. So from this perspective, definitely I think that uh, our governance, our governance is not a rigid process. Our governance is more, uh, more a system with a feedback loop, which reflects what organization needs. But it's a little bit, it's a little bit conservative to be fair to our developers and our API producers so that they will be would be able to adjust. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I I, I was impressed. I've been impressed with uh, Microsoft's ability to adapt to the cloud and respond to to changing market forces. And I uh, have worked on Microsoft technology since early nineties and I I honestly have to say I didn't expect Microsoft to be able to respond and adjust. And I am actually, actually feel like they're leading when it comes to APIs now and cloud infrastructure and, and across all the Microsoft products. I'm really impressed with, with the way that the, the companies responded to an API first uh, landscape. But I want to I understand more about you. 
uh, and because I'm, it's really hard to find people who get governance at the level that you do. So why why does this stuff interest you? Why why does governance and and this role interest you and in, in, as part of your career? Uh, sure. Uh, let let me a little bit add to your previous comment about Microsoft. Oh, yeah. I want to mention I want to mention that uh, a lot of our API effort efforts are actually open sourced, right? Mm -hmm. Our guidelines documentation are public documentation. Our SDK generation automation is a public public open source pro uh, open source. Um, project. Cadle, new language we are working on to implement patterns, is also open source, uh, open source project, project. So we truly believe in the community involvement, and I think that it gives us strength and uh, flexibility for future. Now, answering your question, why I'm interested in the governance. My my passion is more about architecture, and governance is just one part of the architecture. And why I'm thinking about so much about governance and architecture, because I'm think I think about API ecosystem, Microsoft Graph API ecosystem as a complex system with feedback loops, uh, and I'm trying to understand what what will make this what what are the main components of the system how to model the system effectively and how to move the system in the right direction and it what leads me to for example defining criteria for success for our governance uh, it's all based on software architecture practices and uh, we basically applied software architecture to API as a software product to derive to derive uh, qualities based on cloud well architected frameworks like such as AWS and Azure, and augmented with our organizational organization specific and API specific qualities. So this complexity of the uh, system. System, uh, system component interactions drives me to the space and um, gives me excitement every day. So it's why I'm working on it. Very interesting. And I, I mean, we need so many more people just like you to, to fill the space because governance is, and, and I don't want to say just governance, governance the way that you're doing this flexible with feedback loops with the business outcomes focused is so needed. In, in a lot of the technology or IT driven API operations that I see. But there's one piece of that you're, what you're doing that I, I noticed that's really interesting. And I, I'd like to know a little bit more is why are you, why are you so vocal in telling your story? I, I just saw your talk at API specifications conference. You're here on the podcast. Why is it important for you to tell your story? I, I think that the uh, importance of telling story is to share experience, but also learn from the feedback of people. So I'm really looking forward to see feedback from the conference. I really am looking forward to hear feedback from your podcast because it what helps us evolve, right? Uh, this feedback loop uh, positive and also not so positive uh, responses. Um, I guess I guess it's a system approach which I apply consistently to all of my activities, and uh, this is the main purpose of sharing it and bringing more people, more br bringing more people to this conversation. Uh, start talking about API governance, API management. Uh, what does it mean actually API architecture? Because API architecture is relatively is relatively new term, right? Uh, we know what is software architecture, and for a long time, perception of API architect was focused on uh, only specifics of protocols, specifics of 
design and we never thought it's not it's not true never never said never but we did mm -hmm. not think about uh, api as a holistic product uh, as a holistic software product and by product, what is another interesting another interesting thing I found for myself is that when I when we say about when we talk about API as a product, uh, it's not necessarily about uh, how much money we will earn on this API, how much money it will bring for organization. It's about how much customer value it will deliver and how much business value it will deliver, right? And customer and business value may be uh, accounted in different units. It's not only in dollars. It, it's really, uh, we really want to expand this uh, definition. So it's, I guess, I guess, yes, we are publicly talking about our effort in, at Microsoft to involve community to encourage feedback and um, bring more people to the API space. This is just another one of your feedback loops, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so is, is what you just described about treating APIs as products, do you feel like this is what's different than what we had during the service oriented architecture days? Do you feel like that why uh, APIs are working now and, and services didn't work so well or, or failed us back then? Um, <laughs> yes, I did spend a lot of time on integration and service bus, working with service, uh, enterprise service bus and looking at the service ar oriented architecture. I think that it's just another evolution. It's just another evolution of ser service-oriented architecture, honestly. Uh, it's an evolution, uh, and again, uh, using our lessons learned, like, for example, uh, SOAP XML was really heavy, was difficult to process, became very complicated, and we deviated from it. We moved to JSON, which is more user-friendly, human readable and machine readable. We added some specifications like JSON schema on top of it. Uh, but what definitely we are evolving from the um, uh, service oriented architecture. Another huge shift in my opinion is shift to distributed systems, to cloud, to cloud systems, SaaS systems, right? And um, shift to the hybrid uh, business solutions, which require distributed systems to support the business. Dist distributed systems communicate via APIs. Will it be REST API, gRPC? Will it be mm -hmm. uh, some kind of low level interface? It's still an interface, right? So I API, in, when I think about it, it's, um, a really generic term and it's uh, obviously it's application program pro, pro, uh, programming interface but um, point being that with cloud uh, with evolution of distributed systems apis uh, apis are new focus for service oriented architecture just yeah. different evolution you... evolution cycle <laughs> So do you, you think this will just keep going forward? This uh, APIs will just keep reinventing and 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 evolving into the future, and and what we're building now will will prepare us for that. Yes, I think that you provided answer to the, to your question. Yeah. Yes, I th <laughs> yes I think I think that it's an evolution. It's it's an evolution of software. It's an evolution of our ability with internet to communicate across different systems, different regions, different countries, and um, it's definitely it definitely will evolve. Uh, I don't. I don't know how yet. Uh, we are we are learning. Even with uh, with APIs, we always see uh, 
new flavors, new uh, new languages, and coming up and get, being more popular. And again, uh, what I'm thinking is that API is a big term, right? Uh, it's a uh, it's a lot because for different use cases, you may use different type of APIs. For some use cases, REST APIs is a perfect choice. For another use cases, you may need to have gRPC, for example, or gRPC APIs. And uh, maybe we will have a, um, some additional unknown yet use cases when we will need to have a new type of interfaces which also will be APIs because it's system to system communication. Yeah. Well, I I love your your view of things. You really uh you have one of the the more sophisticated views of governance that I've seen out there talking to folks. More most people are I would say API early or becoming to be API aware. You definitely the the governance, the feedback loops, the product mindset um, is is very progressive and very interesting to learn about. And I think I would love to have you back at some point in the future. I'll probably get some of your colleagues to come. I want to learn more about cattle and why cattle exists and and uh, and and how it's going to help us kind of address the the next generation of of APIs. So um, I appreciate you coming by today, though. Thank you so much uh, for your attention, for inviting me and le letting me speak my mind. And uh, so if uh, if you don't mind, I would like just to articulate my main ideas, main points, uh, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Uh, I So the main point I discovered for myself, and we are trying to implement it, that we need to treat API as a software product, as a cloud mm -hmm. software product. Then we need to have, uh, we need to define API qualities based on uh, organizational need. Basically, qualities of your software product is driven by your organizational goals. Then another thing is that you, we need to have standard building blocks to promote best practices, and we need to have these building blocks and patterns for APIs as well, for API design and API implementation. And automation for the large-scale API surfaces is essential. Otherwise, it's not, we won't be able to uh, uh, to enable compliance with quality requirements for APIs. And another thing, for a successful API governance product, we need to have observability and traceability. And it means that we need to have a dashboard, dashboard or some kind of metrics which reflects how our, our API APIs perform in real life. So just on my part, thank you so much. Oh, I love that. Thank you for that definition. That's very succinct and, and very helpful for help, helpful for folks. So um, I look forward to feedback from from people to this show. So I'll um, be in touch and share any questions that we get. And then maybe we can have a conversation again in the future uh, about some of this and see where we can go next. Looking forward for the feedback. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, Olga. I appreciate it. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thanks again to Olga for stopping by. You can find more about Olga on LinkedIn and Microsoft at Microsoft.com. You can subscribe to the Breaking Changes podcast at Postman.com slash events slash breaking dash changes. I'm your host, Ken Lane. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.